Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and today in this we will be talking about test containers pretty much like how we saw in our earlier lectures while we are trying to run our clean test data for every single test run using test containers. And this video is going to be more focused on the test containers itself but we are going to be using Selenium to spin up the browser and run it via test container. And at the same time, we're also going to be learning about test containers desktop as well as the test containers cloud. So what is this test containers desktop? So if you just go to the desktops over here, you can see that this is a free test containers desktop app which you can download for your Windows or Linux or Mac operating system. And in my case, it's going to be Mac Apple Silicon. So I'm going to download this one and I'm going to install this on my local machine. And the way it works is it's more like a bridge between the test execution that happens within your local machine to the actual test containers cloud. That's what really happens. But you can actually control what's really happening behind the scene with this particular test container. So you can actually look into the containers which is running on the test containers. You can also see the logs. You can interact with the container pretty much like how you do with the Docker desktop. And also you can track the session and analyze the test session in the test containers cloud as I told you and that's the real purpose of this particular desktop over here and I've already installed it in my local machine you can just go ahead and download it as you wish and then you can see that there is going to be a test container desktop over here and it's going to show me from how I have logged in and if it is running in my local test container then it's going to be showing up over here if I'm going to be using the test container or the cloud then I can see this one as well over here and I can also see if there is a way I can freeze the container which is running from the test container which has been spawned up every single time I can do that and all those fancy thing comes up over here and then comes up this test container cloud as you can see so this is basically a way that you can run your test using the test containers on the test containers cloud instead of you running it via docker desktop or the docker itself from your local machine because that is going to avoid uh, quite a lot of memory or the usage within your local machine not only that if you're going to be running that in the ci cd environment this is going to be very very helpful because you don't really need to set up any separate docker instances within your ci cd pipeline everything is going to be taken care of by this test container cloud itself and that is the power of the test containers cloud the way you can get started with this test container cloud is just hit this start testing button you will present it for the login operation just hit the login and log in the way that you have already logged in or if you have not you just sign up from here so i'm going to be logging in into the test containers over here and it's going to show me the test containers cloud which is going to give me all the details like how I have executed my test so far. So this is the to-do React application that I was showing you in my last video. And also it's going to show me the images that I have actually used to run the particular application. And I also use Selenium Video for the recording operation and also the standalone Chrome by running the test on the Selenium container itself. So that's what is really happening over here. And I can also see there is a live label over here, which means it's going to be running on my local machine, but you can see the live event coming up. And you can also see there is a cloud label, which means it is going to be entirely a cloud-based test over here on the test container. That's the way that you can differentiate between the local test versus the cloud test execution. So that's about the test containers cloud itself. And I will quickly show you how you can write a Selenium test using c .net and use test container to run the test directly instead of you running it from a local machine. And we will be seeing both the local as well as the containers running on the test containers cloud. But this is going to be an interesting discussion this time. So for doing that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project altogether. So I'm going to be using the .NET 8. I'm going to hit create and it's going to bring me up a new window over here. I'm going to add some dependencies because that is what is required. Uh, I'm going to install the Selenium. That's the first thing. And I'm also going to install the test containers web driver. So if you're just going to go ahead and search for the test containers web driver, you can also find that over here. So as I told you, test container also has got quite a lot of modules in our last video while we were discussing about test containers and how you can get started with it, like all these modules. You can also see that there is something called as Selenium module as well. That is what we are going to be using over here. So I have this module over here. And I'm going to go ahead and install that in my project over here. And once I have added that, I can start writing the code this time. And it's going to be pretty much exactly like how we did before in our last video. If you have not watched, I highly recommend you to please go ahead and watch there. 
But in here, I can show you how you can spin up a Docker container or the test containers Docker container for Selenium over here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to write something like this. Public async of task initiate a browser. And over here, I'm going to say uh, var uh, web driver container is equal to new of the web driver builder. So this is the builder which comes all the way from the test container web driver. I can use that. And using this class, I can use the operations that I'm looking for. For example, I can specify the browser that I'm going to be spinning up. So if I want to spin up the Chrome browser, then I can just say with the browser as Chrome. And if I wanted to use the Firefox browser, then I can just say web driver browser dot Firefox to specify which browser I'm going to be executing. And then I can also specify some more operation like with recording, with configuration from the TO ML file or with command, something like that. So I'm just going to say build for now because I don't want to specify even further operations over here. And finally, we need to run this particular web driver container and the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to use an await of the web driver container dot start async method that is going to really start the browser for me over here so this is the one thing which i have to do in order for me to run this test within my docker container using test container that is what is going to happen over here but now if I wanted to access this particular browser, which is running on the Docker container via test container, I have to know what is the path that I need to connect or what is the URL which I need to specify in order to connect this particular test using remote web driver. So you know that in Selenium, you can use web driver and the remote web driver. And this way that you are doing over here is basically you're going to be spinning under the hood a Selenium Docker container. So if you have not watched my other videos about Selenium Docker container, I highly recommend you to go ahead and watch there in my YouTube channel, which you can go ahead and search in the YouTube and you can see there is something called as running multi-arc Selenium Docker grid using the ARM processor and Docker Selenium and out of the box solution to run Selenium 4 grid setup with just one command. And all these things are especially telling you how you can run the Selenium in the Docker container world. That is what this particular series is all about. But in order for you to see how this really works, just go and search in the GitHub of the Selenium uh, Docker and you'll end up with this particular link over here. And you see that this particular link or the repo that you're seeing over here is basically going to spin up a standalone Firefox browser using this command. And that's what we are essentially doing over here using this particular command. So this is going to basically spin up a Firefox browser, which is exactly what is happening over here. But in order for you to access this particular Selenium Firefox browser, you actually need to use the port number and the IP address to access this particular browser by default it is going to be localhost but if you don't really specify that it is going to be changing every single time based upon the ip address to be honest so that's why we need to know what is the path that we need to use to access this containers web driver within my test so if you don't really get what i'm trying to say over here let me try to run a small test and that and then you'll understand what i mean about it so so I'm going to say await. So basically, because this is an async operation, I'm going to say async of task for this particular test. And then I'm going to say await initiate browser. So this is going to first initiate all the browsers for me, which is Firefox browser in our case. And then we also need to uh, connect to the Selenium web driver. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say new of the remote web driver. And I need to specify the URI. And the URI is going to be Mostly it's going to be localhost colon 4444 and then uh, it's going to be slash WD slash whatever. You don't really have to specify those things these days. And then finally, you need to pass the new Firefox option if you wanted to. That's the way you really connect it, right? And then finally, you also need to do a await of driver dot navigate dot go to URL async method. And I'm going to probably navigate to my most used app, which is the eaapp.sami.com. That's the app which I use mostly for my automation testing purpose. And finally, I also need to do uh, driver.find element by 
uh, link text probably and I just need to click the login operation so I'm gonna just say click that's all that's my test really and now if I want to execute this particular test using the test container let's see what's really gonna basically happen so you will see that it is gonna run my test on the docker container over here every time while I execute it and hopefully it's gonna also spin up the selenium container for me behind the scene uh, but guess what what's gonna happen is that it is gonna run them for me behind the scene as you can see there is a selenium standalone container up and running for the firefox browser automatically which is great but guess what's happening is it couldn't able to connect to this particular url because you can see that the ip address for this particular container is going to be keep on changing every single time and guess what the container is also taken down automatically because it's all going to be taken care of by the test container so you can see that that's really happening behind the scene and we don't even know what's really happening while we use this particular instance of the test container so how should we get around this particular problem well, the way we can get around this problem is there is something called as web driver container dot get connection string method. So you can get this connection string method to really get the connection string of the hub or whatever to get the details out from it. So that is the method that we should be looking for. We can also get the log value or mapped public ports uh, and networks, things of that nature. So I'm going to be using this particular method to see if I could able to connect it directly. And the way I'm actually going to do it is I'm probably going to return this particular value from this particular method as a web driver container, as a task of web driver container. And I can just return this particular value out from here. So it's going to be uh, return the web driver container, something like this. And this can even be just like without a task operation because it's not an async operation right now. So this is just gonna create the browser for me and this is gonna just return. We can also make this as private if you wanted to. And now I can call this particular browser over here and I'm gonna just say web driver container is equal to initiate the browser. And then we also need to start the browser. So I'm gonna just say, uh, web driver container dot start async method so it's going to perform the start operation for me and now i can use this web driver container variable from here dot and then there is something called as get connection string method which is going to do that operation for me over here so hope you got the idea basically instead of me doing it everything from here like starting the entire operation i'm going to write it a bit verbose on the test method itself so you can write it in a many different way, but I'm just trying to make your code more easily readable because the idea is not to teach you how to refactor this code, but the idea is how we can use test container to do those operations. And now let me try to run this test and see what's gonna basically happen. So basically this time if I run the test, you can see that it's gonna spin up the uh, browser, the standalone Firefox browser for me. You can also use the same in the containers over here you can see that we can see the containers in the docker desktop or sorry test container desktop and you can also see that it's going to show you the test container desktop it's going to show the details and you can do an ls to see what is really happening behind the scene and hopefully the test has also got succeeded this time you see that it has got passed this time which is great and it also gives you a bit of verbose information this time it says that the test container.org connected to the docker using this particular host See that URL is going to be 127.0.0.1, but the port number is entirely different. It's 49272. And then this is the version that it has connected to. Uh, and also it says there is a Docker network being set for that. There's a Docker container being created. It started the Docker container for you behind the scene. Uh, and then it waited for the Docker container to get ready. And then it executed the test for you. Uh, and once everything is completed then it also been taken down which is all great all the magics are happening behind the scene for you while you just say one line just build it and start it it's going to do the entire thing for you behind the scene so now you can run a selenium test directly in the docker container via test containers and now I'm going to say, okay, there we go, Karthik, which is great. I mean, if I wanted to run this in the test container cloud, how can I do that? Well, just go to this particular test container uh, desktop, 
change it from running locally to this test container cloud. I'm just going to select this particular checkbox there. See, it's been selected this time. And now what happens is if I run the test this time and if I go to the Docker desktop, you'll notice that nothing is happening on my Docker desktop this time. It's nothing is spinning over here in my local Docker desktop. Rather, it's all running on the test container over here. Do you see that it is doing some sort of magic there and just now it's been updated? Um, just this one. And you can see that there is a Selenium Firefox being executed over here, which is great. So that's really happening for me behind the scene over here. I don't know, for some reason, the time it doesn't show me exactly. It shows me like 15 minutes ago, but I have no idea why this is just 15 minutes ago. Uh, but let me try to run the same test again, but with a different browser, hopefully. So that way I can differentiate what's really happening behind the scene. So let's say I'm going to use with the Edge browser. And if I try to run again on the cloud, and you can see that we have got the Selenium standalone Edge browser this time, and it has executed over here as well. And you'll also notice that, I mean, for some reason, the time is not changing, which I have no idea why. Maybe it's because they are in the same instances of execution but i can clearly see that there is an edge browser being executed over here and the number of time it has really taken it says that the worker is not started and there is a reason why because you can see that the test is still executing for us behind the scene it has not fully completed that execution so once the test execution is fully completed you should see that there is an execution completion coming up over here and you'll also notice that the Firefox browser, like how much time it has executed, it's going to show you that detail over here, like created in 50 seconds, 56 seconds, and it died in one minute of nine seconds. And there is a failure for that reason. Okay, I don't know why, but for some reason, it's not really connecting to the Edge browser. So if I change it back to Firefox, and let's try to see if that execution is really going to happen. So if I try to run this test once again, with the Firefox browser, you can see that the test execution is completed successfully with the Firefox browser over there. So if I just go to the test container cloud and if I try to refresh this particular page, you can see that we have got the same Firefox, which has been executed over here, uh, which has been shown at this particular point of time. So if I change any other browser, let's say Firefox to Chrome, it just works fine as well without any problem. So that is how everything is really happening behind the scene for you. And that is the way that you can use test container. But there is another way that you can tell like, Karthik, what if I wanted to execute the test with a specific port and with specific host name? Because if I don't specify this guy over here, uh, and if I wanted to always use local host of probably 444, like which I always used to use it, like how can I actually do that? Well, in order for you to achieve that particular operation, all you have to do it is you just have to use um, maybe with browser, which is fine. And then you can just say with port binding, and then you can just pay the port as 555 or maybe 444 for that matter. Uh, and then you can get the port which has been exposed from the container as 4444 as well. And then you can give the host name as a local host if you wanted to. So if you just specify that, and then if you just get rid of this particular thing over here from this particular page, uh, and just specify HTTP colon uh, double slash of uh, localhost colon probably 4444, this should just work as well because now you have specified the port binding and the host name, something like this. This way, that should just work. But I always recommend you to not just hard code this particular value. All the time, try to use uh, the uh, web driver container dot get connection string method because that is the reason why this particular method exists there. And while you try running the test using this way, it is always gonna just work fine without any problem. So that is how you actually do it. And hope you got the idea of how you can use test container desktop as well as test container cloud and run your Selenium test or any other test from your local machine as well as on the cloud with just few lines of code.